Hello everybody, this video is on instantaneous and average velocity. Let's start off with a simple scenario. Suppose there's a person running along a straight track of a distance 130 meters. Initially, the person is at rest and he quickly accelerates to a velocity of 15 meters per second in the first two seconds. And he maintains this velocity at 15 meters per second for the next six seconds. And towards the end of this run, he gets a bit tired and he starts to slow down and therefore decreases his velocity to about 12.5 meters per second. The whole duration of the motion was 130 meters and took a total time of 10 seconds. In physics, instantaneous velocity is the velocity at a specific time during the motion of an object. As you saw in the graph, the velocity or speed of the person varied throughout the run. It started with zero and accelerated to a maximum of 15 minutes per second and it remained constant at 15 for the duration of four seconds and quickly decreased to 12.5 meters per second for the next four seconds. The instantaneous velocity depends on the time point during the 10 seconds that you're looking at. For example, the instantaneous velocity at 1.2 second can be estimated by looking at the graph. So 1.2 second is roughly here. If we draw a vertical line from 1.2, we can see that the velocity is roughly eight meters per second. To calculate the instantaneous velocity more precisely, we can also employ the kinematic equation V equals U plus AT, assuming we have a uniform acceleration. In the first two seconds, the velocity versus time graph is linear, which implies that there is in fact uniform acceleration. We can calculate the acceleration by taking the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by the total time. The final velocity at the end of two seconds is 15 minutes per second and the initial velocity is zero because the runner started from rest. This is then divided by a total of two seconds which gives us 7.5 meters per second squared for the acceleration. We can then use this acceleration in the same equation by using a different time, that is 1.2 seconds, to find the instantaneous velocity at 1.2 seconds. So V is equal to zero, which is the initial velocity, plus 7.5 meters per second squared times by 1.2 seconds. This gives a value of nine meters per second. What about the instantaneous velocity at t equals 6.5 second? So 6.5 second is roughly in the third interval, shortly after the runner started to decelerate. We need to find the acceleration during the third interval as this is different to what we calculated in the first two seconds. We'll use this kinematic equation again to calculate the acceleration. A is equal to V minus U, so the change in velocity divided by time. The final velocity at the end of this interval, 12.5 meters per second, minus the initial velocity, which was 15 minutes per second before the deceleration, and this is over a span of four seconds. This gives an acceleration of negative 0.625 meters per second squared. We'll now use this acceleration in the same equation, but using time at 6.5 seconds to calculate the instantaneous velocity at this time. So V is equal to, the initial velocity here is not zero, it's actually the velocity at the beginning of this interval, which is at six seconds. So that is 15 minutes per second, plus the new acceleration, which is minus 0 0.625, multiply by the time, which is 0 0.5 seconds. Here, we don't substitute 6.5 because at t to six seconds, we are pretending that this is the beginning of the motion. That means at t equals to 6.5 seconds, that is exactly 0.5 seconds after the runner started to decelerate. So in the equation, you must adjust the time numbers accordingly so that it is consistent with your initial time of the motion. And just to clarify, the initial time of the motion is at six seconds, so we'll make that zero, which means at t equals to 6.5, that becomes 0.5 seconds after the six seconds. And this gives me an instantaneous velocity of 
14.69 meters per second. Now, the average velocity, unlike the instantaneous velocity, is the average velocity over a specific time interval. This can be usually calculated by dividing the total displacement by the total time. From the earlier parts of the video, we mentioned that the total displacement was 130 meters. And as you can see in the graph again, the total time of the motion is exactly 10 seconds. And that means we can calculate the average velocity by dividing 130 by 10, which gives us an average velocity of 13 meters per second. We can also calculate the total displacement by examining the area under the graph of a velocity versus time graph. Recall that the area under a velocity versus time graph represents the displacement of the object. We can divide this graph into three sections in order to find the area. One, two, and three. The first part is a triangle. So the area of the first part of the motion is half the breadth, which is 2, times by the height, which is 15. And this is 15 meters. The second area is in the form of a rectangle. So the area is simply the length times by the width. So the length here is 15 again, and the width is 4. And this gives a value of 60 meters. The area of the third part of the graph is in the form of a trapezium which as a way of review, the area is given by half the height of the trapezium times by A plus B. This is the height of the trapezium and A and B are the shorter and longer side of the trapezium respectively. So the height of the trapezium is 10 minus six, which is four, and A here is 12.5 and B is 15. And this gives a displacement of 55 meters. Therefore, the total displacement is the sum of all these displacements, which yields a value of 130 meters. And just to recap, the average velocity can be calculated by dividing the total displacement of 130 meters over the total time, which is 10 seconds, and this gives 13 meters per second as the average velocity. The difference between instantaneous and average velocity can also be examined using a displacement versus time graph. This graph shows the displacement over time of an object in motion with uniform acceleration. That is, it's increasing its velocity by the same rate over time. As you can see in the beginning part of the five second interval, it traverses a smaller displacement, but over time, the displacement over time becomes larger and larger, suggesting a greater velocity. The average velocity of this motion can be simply calculated by taking the total displacement and dividing the total time. The total displacement is 100 meters, as you can see on the y-axis, divided by the total time, which is 5 seconds, as shown on the x-axis. This gives an average velocity of 20 meters per second. However, the instantaneous velocity is a bit more tricky because, as you can see, the gradient of this graph, which is representing a velocity changes over time. The instantaneous velocity in the beginning will be smaller and the instantaneous velocity at the end of the five, towards the end of the five second will be larger. So depending on which point of the graph you're looking at, the instantaneous velocity will be very different. For example, if we want to calculate the instantaneous velocity at three seconds, we will need to draw a tangential line that represents the gradient at this particular point. And by calculating the gradient, that gives us the instantaneous velocity of this line. Likewise, if we want to calculate instantaneous velocity at five seconds, we also need to draw a tangential line at this point and then calculate the gradient in order to find the velocity. As you can see, the gradient at five seconds, it's steeper than the gradient at three seconds. This should make sense to you because the instantaneous velocity at five seconds is larger than at three seconds. 